Hey, good afternoon, good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to uh, this new session. Let's just begin this time with a word of prayer. Uh, so can anyone please lead us in prayer? Let's go ahead. Any of us can please lead in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you under the name of Jesus. We thank you for this beautiful day and for the class we are about to have. God, I just give Pastor Paul into your hands. Be with him and guide him throughout the session. And God, as we are listening, uh, help us to open our mind and heart and listen to each and every verse that he says clearly uh, so we can put that into action and glorify your kingdom. I pray for all my classmates who are listening. I pray for the classmates who are on the way. God, we just pray for good Wi-Fi connection throughout the sessions and help us to uh, learn a little more about you, get a little more closer in our relationship with you. Be with us and guide us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jeffina. All right, everyone can hear me okay? Uh, <clears throat> My voice may be a little bit low. I hope it's all right. Yes, Pastor, we can hear you. All right. What about the others? Can you hear me all right? Voice is okay? Pastor, yes, we are yes. hearing you. Awesome. All right. So last week, we looked at personal vision and purpose. And we established the fact that God has made us for a purpose. Right. And as we journey along trying to understand that purpose, the foundation is very important, which means the what we build on. Right. And we looked at last week, last week, that what uh, the foundation, even in the natural, when you look at a <clears throat> building, the foundation is the most important thing. Right. It goes deep, it goes down, it needs to be strong, only then the building will stand. And our foundation, what we build on, is very important. So we looked at uh, some of the things that we must, uh, you know, have be clear about is certain non-negotiables, how we treat people, how we treat money, our character, our our integrity, honesty, dealing with uh, situations. All of this <clears throat> will build a good foundation. Then we also looked at uh, developing a life plan. Right. Uh, it could be a one-year plan, five-year, ten-year, whatever the plan is, uh, but develop a plan. Uh, because a life plan is connected to the person, the place, and the purpose that God wants us to be. Right? And we look at Abraham, right? Uh, God wanted him to be the father of many nations, saying that a place that he will inherit will be uh, a land flowing with milk and honey, and the purpose was to be a blessing uh, to many, many generations ahead. So the same way, when we make a life plan, we can you know, probably jot down or make a note of what is the person that God wants me to be? What is the place uh, or where, a uh, geographical location if God wants you to move to? And then the purpose. Uh, what is the purpose of me doing what I'm doing? That was chapter one. Let's get into chapter two. Chapter two, we'll talk about career plan. Now, many of us uh, may be in a season where we've already started our career. Many of us may be planning to start our career, right? Uh, or maybe some of us are getting ready to retire. Right? Uh, but we decide on our destination even before the journey begins, right? So before a building is built, there is somebody, there's an architect who creates a blueprint for that building. Right? Here's how it's going to look. Here are the columns. These are the, this is the area. This is how it's going to be. Uh, this is the square feet for each, uh, uh, you know, each place, everything. Now, having a life plan is a starting point in our journey, right? Now, your life plan may be a, uh, you know, it's a big picture, right? Sometimes we ask young people, what do you want to become? They say, I want to be an entrepreneur and I want my business to go global. So it's wonderful, right? Those are life plans. Uh, now, as we understand the, our life plans, God will begin to 
groom us or grow us into the person that he wants us to be. He, he will also direct us to the place that he wants us to be or places that he wants us to go. And then we look at the purpose that he can fulfill in and through our lives. Right? So a life plan contains or has several areas, spiritual life, personal life, health, education, profession, family, finances, ministry, uh, all of this include in a life plan, right? Uh, and so today we'll just look at how we can go about creating a life plan, right? And, and why is it important now? See, for example, if you feel that God has called you to be a doctor, now you you know that if you know that there's a certain course that you have to take, and you know that that course is going to be five or six years, right? And then we also know that okay, after that there are other things that need to be done, right? So, and while we have a life plan, it's a starting point, but to see it in fulfillment, we have to work towards it. Right? So know your grace, your gifts, and your skills. Let's read this verse from Romans chapter 12, verse 6 to 8. Yes, any one of us can read. It's in your notes, Romans 12, 6 to 8. Romans chapter 12, verse 6 to 8. We have different gifts according to the grace given us. If a man's gift is prophesying, let him use it in proportion to his faith. If it is serving, let him serve. If it is teaching, let him teach. If it is encouraging, let him encourage. If it is contributing to the needs of others, let him give generously. If it is leadership, let him govern diligently. If it is showing mercy, let him do it cheerfully. Amen. Yes, thank you, Jafina. So, <clears throat> God has, what does the verse say there? There are different gifts in accordance to the grace that God has given us. So, God has graced and gifted each one of us. Right now, I always say this it's like a railway track, right? If you've seen a railway track, right, I'm sure all of us have, they go together, they are parallel to each other. So, they got your grace and there are there's gifting right so if if we feel that god has given us the grace to be a worship leader just an example right worship leader is a gift in it, in us you know that okay i can musically i can do well god also gives us the grace to fulfill or the empowering to to express that gift in our lives right so it is doing something meaningful and impactful uh, for people for god's kingdom right gifts are abilities that we discover and skills are abilities that we uh, and knowledge we develop and gain through learning yeah, through learning through training through discipline right so our, we have our gifts right we have god's given grace and then we have skills which we have to develop on right i think a perfect a perfect example would be that of a you know a, a, a musician right there's a gift inside okay i i know i i know i can sing and i'm musically i for example right Maybe you know there's this young boy who knows, okay, musically, I have a gift. Right? Now, God gives him the grace in that gift. Now, just because God gives the grace doesn't mean that we just sit about saying, okay, God's grace is on me. I'll go and I'll play the guitar or play the instrument and sing. No. We need to grow in the skills. Right? There's training, there's discipline, there's practice, there's, there's all these things involved. And then as we are growing in our gifting, we realize that, you know, 10 years back, the gift is still there, but the grace, is, has, the grace has increased, the skill level has increased. 
uh, and and that's what we want to do, right? God has not called us to just you know have a gift and not use it. That's that's not the reason why He has given us gifts, right? As we faithfully operate in our areas of grace, exercise our gifts and skills, we grow in this. <clears throat> grace can increase, gifts can mature, and skills can develop. Right. And we we know this, right? Grace can increase in every area of our life. Gifts can mature. Right. So for example, uh, if there is somebody who is a teacher, right? Uh, and they begin they're they're you know, they just join the teaching profession. I'm sure the initial years he or she is going to be very wavery and you know nervous or probably you know, go through a difficult time initially. Why? Is a gift there? Yes. But it's something that they're doing the first time. But when you look at a teacher maybe who's taught for 30 years, we can easily make out the difference. We can see that the grace has increased, the gifts has increased, the skills, the competency has increased. And so over time, even as we exercise our gifts, exercise our the grace that God has given to us, God begins to develop us. Now, this can also be applied to prayer through our reading of the word. Right? So you could be somebody who's in the workplace, a workplace professional. You can develop these even in, in your prayer life, in your personal time with God. Right? Uh, and I always say this, you know, people always ask me, what time do you wake up? What time do you pray? How do you pray? All these. So one of the things I always say is start small. Right? Start small. So if it is, if it's something, if you feel that you can pray for 20 minutes, start small. Right? Uh, and then you build from there. Right? Because the mistake that I made was... I thought I said to myself, "Oh man, now I'm become a believer, so I'm going to pray for one hour every day in the morning." So I woke up. By the time it was five minutes, I fell asleep, and then I woke up probably after one hour, and I realized, "Hey, I slept the whole time." Why? Because I wanted to do something, but it, I did not set realistic goals. Right. So I then, then I had to change my whole approach. Said, so, okay, let's make it 15 minutes of prayer. So that was something doable, right? And 15 minutes of worship. So 30 minutes, right? And then over time, because of God's grace, because that, you know, we are pushing us, exercising our gifts and grace that God has given us, God begins to help us. And then soon you'll realize half an hour is not enough. Then you'll realize one hour is not enough. Then you extend your time of prayer and and you know uh, personal time with God. And all of this can be applied in every area of our life. You may be a businessman. You may be somebody who is in the corporate sector. You may be in government. You may be teaching in schools. You may be at college. You may be a student, or you may be even a housewife, right? In all that we do, God gives us grace. God gives us the ability to grow, right? So there's in your notes, you can see there, uh, there's, a, there's a column there. What are some areas you are drawn to, inclined towards, and passionate about? You can write them down if you'd like. Gifts and skills, what are areas where you are? knowledgeable about and what are some things you do well so you can take some time to write them down right uh, please feel free to stop me at any time uh, if you have any questions any thoughts you'd like to share also please feel free to stop right next point is explore opportunities get inputs and draw up a plan right explore opportunities get input and draw up a plan proverbs chapter 11 and verse 14 yes any one of us can please read 
Proverbs 11 and verse 14. It's on your notes. Proverbs chapter 11, verse 14. Where there is no counsel, the people fall, but in the multitude of counselors, there is safety. Amen. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Divya. <clears throat> yeah. Where there is no counsel, people fall, but in the multitude of counselors, there's safety. Now, we live in a day and age where we have a lot of opportunities, right? Those are open in every single opportunity you know whoever thought you know i was talking to a friend of mine whoever thought that uh, you know youtube can be a career right whoever thought that uh, you know a, a football or soccer in a nation like ours in india especially could be a career right so things are changing but even as th things ch change we need to explore opportunities Right. Uh, so some of the things that we can do is to l leverage our grace, our gifts and our skills. Right. Now, we leverage them not only for monetary rewards, but to see how we can better ourselves and improve ourselves. And basically, we want to improve and better ourselves to glorify God in our lives. Right? So it's not only about, okay, I want to better myself, earn double what I'm earning. That's part of it. But, but the key thought should be, okay, improving myself, bettering myself because of God's grace and gifts on my life. And I want to give glory to God in my life. Right? So some of the things that we do is, uh, for example, as a church, uh, what we do is we always look for opportunities to minister. Right. So, when we we go into uh, you know over the last uh, month or so, uh, we we looked at opportunities to get into IT companies. Right. So we used to you know initially we used to go to IT companies and uh, IT uh, you know, hubs around Bangalore and do a lot of carols and a lot of uh, outreaches, right? college outreaches. We used to go to apartments and. You know, try to reach out there as well. Uh, so look for opportunities, right? See where doors can be opened, right? And uh, as you look for these opportunities, get input from people, right? So for example, there's a door open, right? You feel that, okay, God is calling you to move to another country, right? Uh, say it's a country you you you've been thinking about and you need to move to another country now get input right so you you talk to your friends you talk to people who you know talk to agencies find out what it is right what you must do it's not like god is say oh i need to go to another country so i just go apply for my visa and just go no there's this lot of input that's required there's a lot of preparation involved you need to draw up a plan right so how do I do this? You, you sit back, you think, you write them down, <clears throat> get input from people who have probably traveled already. Uh, you know, people, you know, especially uh, uh, in church, we have a lot of folks, young youth, youth who come and they ask us, you know, do you think it's good to go abroad at this time? What must I do? The first thing we say is prayerfully draw up your plans get input from people talk to agencies talk to people right uh, uh you know never be in a hurry you know sometimes because god speaks to us very clearly and we're in a hurry right we just want to get it done uh, so that's not how god works right god expects us to use wisdom and prepare ourselves so get to know what is out there read research online Talk to people who are experienced or uh, or even look at people who have volunteered in different organizations. Talk to them, right? Uh, and, and get input, right? So, so whether it is moving to another country, whether it is, it could be something as simple as buying a home, right? It's okay. It's, 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 it's a big deal, right? So get input. Look at opportunities. See, ask God, God, what should I do? 
because it's 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 you're drawing up a life plan right and when you do these things and you surrender them to god that is where you see uh you know the right decisions being taken right look at proverbs 15 22 it says without counsel plans go awry but in the multitude of councils they are established proverbs 19 20 listen to counsel and receive instruction that you may be wise in your latter days right and you know one of the things as pastors uh, is many people come and talk to us they share things that with us and there was this one person this happened many many years back he was sharing with me he wanted to start a business right um so he very he he prayed and he felt that okay god is going to go so he god is going to help him in that business so he quit his monthly uh his job that where he would get a monthly pay and he began to try to start a business uh but soon over time he you know he spent all the money uh, that he had saved which was not too much but he spent all his money and eventually, because the business was already started and running, he resorted to selling his home. Because here's what he did. He sold his home and began living in a rented house. Right? Now, the business took some time, right? Uh, it was three, four years down the line. Uh, but he was seeped in debt. Right? He had no roof. His wife and his children had no roof under their head. They couldn't even afford to pay their rent. And they sold their own home. And it was a mess. Right? And you know, he spoke to us, so literally weeping and crying, saying, I don't know what went wrong. Right? But it's not, it not and during this time you can't say, you know what, you didn't ask, you didn't take your time you didn't you know pray properly or you didn't uh you know these are the wrong things that to say but it is very it was very sad to see uh that sometimes without counsel we make decisions they go awry and they they you know, they can really destroy or break down a good future so what are we, what are we trying to say you can always look for opportunities get input draw up a plan take time and prepare i love what uh, elijah did it, it makes so much sense right? and it's so practical god told elijah it's gonna rain but he went and prayed right he knew the result but he still went and prayed and seven times he did that and only in the seventh time uh, you know there were signs of rain so sometimes God will open opportunities, open doors, and we have everything, have the input, we have already drawn up a plan. Sometimes God can make us wait. Right? He, he can make us say, okay, wait, there's still a preparation. Hold on. Don't step into that yet. And so while you're sometimes we are not able to identify the stages and transitions that we are making, but always identify this current stage you're in you know the current stage you're in so maybe uh, you know i always tell the bible college students especially those who are on campus don't waste time don't waste time uh, because these two years or three years will go really fast and i remember as a bible college student uh, you know i spent all my time i wouldn't take lunch breaks I didn't want any lunch break and all of them were in my class would be like how can you know what how can you not take a break uh, uh, i just wanted to learn because i knew that i'm not going to get this time again it was a two-year course that i did uh and in my lunch break i'll be you know looking at the book or you know after after lunch hours even in my 10 minute tea break i would sometimes be reading something or the other do something uh, the reason was uh, it's not to brag or to boast but the reason was i wanted to i knew that because i was a working professional i knew that this time that i have is very precious right so understand 
the season that you're living in right now. You may be a, uh, you know, uh, in a stage where you're working for a company, but deep down in your heart, you know you're going to start your own business. But understand, okay, right now I'm here. I'm going to do my best here, but one day God will transition me out from here to start my own business. Life is lived in seasons. And these transitions are very important. They move you from one season to the next season. Right? And we must understand uh, and, and try to recognize which season we are in. Right? Uh, I, I, there was a time when I was a student and I recognized, okay, I'm a student, but this time of being a student is not going to be there for a long time. It's just two years. And sure enough, after my diploma, I, I got into the uh, as staff at APC, and you know, it's not like I can sit the whole day and read the Word of God. Uh, there are other things to do, looking after the church, right? And so this is a season, but that two years was very important, right? So uh, we need to recognize the season we are in. Do what needs to be done in the season that you are in. Prepare for the next season. Right. Uh, I think I've shared this many a times. Uh, I always knew that when I was in Bible college, I always knew, okay, man, one day I'm going to be preaching. So how do I prepare? So I would sit and, you know, choose words, right? So for example, grace, I would make a whole sermon on that. Or prepare, uh, you know, choose people. Uh, in the Bible, right? So Old Testament, I choose two people, New Testament, two people. I'm beginning to just write a whole sermon on there. So I began to prepare. Then what I would do is I would stand in front of the mirror and preach the whole sermon. And so many times I realized it's five pages, but I finished it in five minutes. I thought, oh, this, this is not happening. I need to have a sermon that uh, will go on to at least 40, 45 minutes. So add more content, prepare well, uh, the way I, uh, the way we speak, the way we, uh, you know, hand gestures, all of these things, right, uh, is very, very important. And it was a good practice, right? And so I remember early 2012 when pastor said, can you go and uh, preach? Now, I had only preached in uh, front of the mirror. All of a sudden, I'm preaching in front of people. It was very difficult. But I thank God for those two years right, it, that helped me through uh, and helped me. Of course, God's grace was there. God enabled us. But that two years is important. See a question from Divya. <clears throat> if one doesn't have much counsel in our vicinity or at our disposal, what is the best possible way apart from seeking God's will and praying? Okay. So, yeah, that's a good question, Divya. So if there is not much counsel available, uh, uh, so if there is no in-person counsel, meaning a, a person who you can talk to, um, I think books are very, uh, I'm sure books will have plenty of, uh, you know, uh, counsel that you can get from books. Uh, and now with online, uh, so there's a lot of, you know, if you look at YouTube, you have how to, how to you know, uh, plan a startup or how to build a startup. You have so much of information, how to start ministries. Now, uh, you know, for example, now uh, there's this uh, preacher.com. Uh, you have the paid service where you, you can go there and they help you to prepare sermons. You have sermoncentral.com. So I think uh, even online, there's plenty of material, right? So apart from seeking God's will, uh, sorry, uh, apart from praying and seeking God's will, uh, as you do that, and you you know you can also go online and you know do your research. God will minister to you. God can lead you and tell you what to do. Right? He can just say, okay, do this. Like a word can come so strong and a conviction so strong, you'll know that this is what God wants me to do. So yes, it's always nice to have people, uh, you know, and people who are experienced to talk to you. Uh, but I think in a world that we are in now, uh, internet has made the world a smaller space. Uh, so we can just go online, Google. Um, you know, I was, I was talking to 
uh, a cousin of mine. She's, I think, 11 years old, and she was playing the violin. She was playing so well. I said, uh, oh, how did you, uh, how did you, you know, when do you go for classes during the weekdays or uh, uh, weekends? She said, no, I learned everything online. So she's on her, I don't know, I think a fifth or sixth grade. She learned the whole thing online. She never stepped out of her house for classes. Right? So, so if you see, uh, things have changed so much. What we, what we were doing 10 years back or 15 years back, we can just uh, do it at home right now. So I hope Divya that answers your question. Yeah. Uh, but keep praying, right? Because uh, if, if, if you keep going online and looking at all these uh, YouTube videos and Google and all of that, sometimes you may get overwhelmed. Oh man, how are people doing it? Why am I not able to do it? Or there's so much to be done. Uh, sometimes you may get overwhelmed. So always do these things prayerfully. So God can you know minister to you. It, it becomes an encouragement you know, more than you know getting bogged down and uh, getting stressed out and all of that. So, right. Um, keep in mind that uh, life is lived in seasons and recognize those seasons work hard in those seasons, do what needs to be done, prepare yourself, the right time there will be a transition, a transition, and God will help you in that transition phase. <clears throat> so, get started, pray, listen, and step out. Right. Now, Proverbs 13 says, the soul of a lazy man desires and has nothing. But the soul of the diligent shall be made rich. Right? Look at that word, so powerful. The soul of a lazy man desires and has nothing, only keeps desiring. But the soul of the diligent shall be made rich. Sometimes the preparatory work of praying and listening to God, the planning, all of that, you know, is, is uh, you know, uh, Never get never get started. Meaning, in the sense, we we have a big plan, we have a big idea, but the preparatory work is not done. If you just desire, if we just desire, plan or dream and don't act upon it, you will accomplish nothing. That's so true. I think all of us know this, right? The preparatory work is very important. God has a plan for you. God has something that you know you want to do. Pray about it. Listen to God. Now, I want to be careful. If if God is calling you to start a ministry, for example, it's not that we sit at home and pray the whole day and say, I'm doing the preparatory work. Okay, prayer is important. Listening also is important. And what's the last step? Step out. Right? Now, the mistake I made was I became a believer. I said, Oh man, I want to start preaching. So I spent hours in my room praying. Hours. Uh, read God's word. And is it good? Very good. Is it important? Very important. But you know what happened? I wouldn't go out. I didn't I realized that I didn't want to talk to people. I just wanted to be in the room praying, talking to God. I mean, it sounds good, you know, praying, always worship. And it was a wonderful season, you know, God would literally speak into my spirit. And I knew it was God. Sometimes I would open scriptures and God would just bring those words to life into my spirit. But on the flip side, I, I couldn't communicate with people. I didn't want to be around people. I preferred only being alone. Why? Because for almost one year, I'm only sitting in my room and praying. And I realized ministry is about people. I need to be with people. I need to minister to people. I'm not doing ministry to myself. So I thank God for giving me for the grace and the wisdom. I, uh, and I remember reading the book of Acts. And every time I read it, I saw that they went out, they went to places, they went and ministered. And then the great apostle Paul, 
went out ministering to people, all the apostles from the, in the early church. And as well as, hey, I need to step out. I can't be sitting here. Was I doing something wrong? No. It was a wonderful, holy, you know, very righteous thing I'm doing. But I also need to listen. I need to step out. If I just desire something, a plan, and I don't do anything about it, then we will accomplish nothing. You've got to step up. You've got to work on that plan. Start developing the skills required. Right? Knock for doors to be opened. This is a wonderful thing, right? Proverbs 16 and verse 1. The preparations of the heart belong to man, but the answer of the tongue is from the Lord. The preparations of the heart belong to man, but the answer of the tongue belong is from the Lord. Even as we prepare, or well, basically what we're doing is we're putting that preparation into the feet of our Lord Jesus and saying, God, this is what I've planned. This is what I have prepared. Now you open the right doors at the right time for me. I may go knocking. Sometimes the door won't be open. Help me not to be discouraged. Sometimes the door may open, but give me the wisdom. Should I go into that door or no? Right? I, uh, as I was saying this, I, I was reminded of this. It happened in, I don't know if I've shared this example, but it's happened in, I think in 2014 or 15, 15, I think. And uh, uh, there was this, uh, can you say the name? Uh, Oral Roberts University had come to Bangalore. And uh, I'm not sure if I've used this example, but <clears throat> If I have, forgive me. I just thought this is the best example that I can use. They had come to uh, our church and they wanted to do, you know, just a uh, talk about Oral Roberts University. And that Sunday, I was I was scheduled to lead the worship, and I was leading I was leading worship at uh, uh, Central Church, and they had come there. And as I was. Uh, as we finished the worship, finished the whole service, uh, we were around and uh, the Bible college administrator right, uh, came up, uh, the, the, the principal basically the, uh, the, uh, of the Bible college came to me and said, uh, Paul, uh, you and your family can come to the U.S., and do your three years course, free of cost, free stay, free accommodation, free 100% scholarship. And that time, uh, my son was, my first son was only probably about six, seven, six months older. Uh, so it looked very nice. But that at that moment, I mean, it looks nice, right? Uh, everything is looked after, hundred percent concession, free accommodation. You get your degree, and then she also said that uh, we'll help you to, you know, get your, uh, you know, your green card and all of that. You can do your masters, and you can also look at opportunities of serving in the university itself. I'm sure there will be opportunities there. You look wonderful, a wonderful opportunity. But at that moment, as she was talking to me, I felt like the Holy Spirit saying, no, it's not. There was no peace at all when she asked me, was it good? Very good. Right? So at that moment, right there, I told her, no, I'm not interested. I'm sorry. Thank you so much for the opportunity, but I'm not interested. And she was so surprised. Said, Why? I said, no, God's called me to be here. God wants me here. There's still much to learn. And uh, she was really surprised. Uh, she said, it's wonderful that you know, you know what you're going to do. So sometimes doors open. We need to choose. We need to understand. Because some doors are very nice. But we need the wisdom of God to choose the right door. Right? If an opportunity comes to your door without you having to knock, sometimes that's wonderful. 
but just remember it may not happen every time right then as you go through the knocking process do your best to prepare right preparation belongs to man and it is our responsibility leave the results up to god right joshua and caleb uh, had to go to the promised land they prepared themselves right what did they do they formed teams they moved they did what, all of that around the wall they they went seven times around the wall they did all of that but the outcome is what the lord did it right the lord brought the walls down so don't get discouraged if the first door you knock on does not open reminded of this john wesley uh we know him a great preacher 40000 odd sermons he has preached when he was in college uh, uh you know he was rejected as a as a speaker right they wouldn't allow him to go and speak and on stage and he was rejected they made fun of his speaking style they made fun of the way he would stand and speak john wesley is known to have a very uh he was eloquent but he was very fast in his speech uh right he was rejected as a preacher but there's no more, nobody else who has preached 40000 sermons right so matthew 7 7 and 8 says ask and it will be given to you seek and you will find knock and the door will be opened for everyone who asks and he who seeks finds and to him who knocks it will be opened so even as you drop your plan you're praying you're developing your skills you're doing all of this here's the thing don't be discouraged expect the unusual favor of god to be upon you right you 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 may be preparing you're faithfully preparing you're waiting you're you're learning you're you're improving your skills sometimes you may get tired but expect the unusual favor of god look at this in genesis 39 verse 21 about joseph everything went wrong for joseph but all of a sudden things changed genesis 39 and verse 21 but the lord was with joseph and showed him mercy and he gave him favor in the sight of the keeper of the prison the prison keeper was favorable to him and the prison keeper later went on and told the, the pharaoh i know somebody who's going to who can tell you your dream and interpret it as well right so expect unusual favor from god there can be times when people will you know uh, you may feel that hey who who's going to choose me uh, but god can speak into people's lives speak into situations where you will be called in front or you will be recognized for what you are doing right there are plenty of places in the old testament where god's favor on people's lives saw them do the impossible right peter fearful denied jesus three times went on to lead the church in jerusalem unschooled divine favor is an endowment from god released upon a person and that person has the influence to access people places and things unusual opportunities will come forward but right? unusual you know god will recognize it and god will tell people you give this opportunity to this person and i've seen it in my life right god just giving opportunities I say you you go do it and i keep thinking to myself god am i am i equipped enough sometimes i even now i ask the question god am i equipped enough it it makes me it helps me to push for more god if you are giving me more opportunities greater the greater the opportunities greater the preparation the skills that i have to develop in myself right 
So you look at Daniel, look at Joseph, Nehemiah. Nehemiah is another brilliant story. Right? He asked the same people who destroyed the walls of Jerusalem and the burns, the gates that were burned. They themselves provided for everything. What favor was that? Right? Uh, sometimes when we have favor, it opens unusual doors which nobody can close. Nobody can close. Right? There's this one person that I knew of, I know of. Uh, <coughs> he was saying uh, many years back, he was saying, uh, uh, he was part of our church, and uh, he was saying he wanted, he desired to go to Canada. A very humble boy, very humble, very hardworking, always serving in church. And he desired to go to Canada and look for opportunities. Okay, let me uh, answer this question from Divya. Are expecting and looking for opportunities for oneself selfish or biblical? It's biblical. It's definitely biblical. Uh, uh, we looking for opportunities is is nothing wrong, right? It's it's nothing wrong to look for opportunities. You look at Apostle Paul; he looked for opportunities where he could preach. He looked for opportunities where he could go and minister to people. You know, a lot of have you ever wondered? Uh, you know, I was reading when you read the book of Romans towards the end of the book end of the letter, he says, greet people who meet in Caesar's household. So people have become believers in Caesar's household. So probably Paul has got an opportunity to go into Caesar's household, I don't know, and minister to the people there. Look at uh, when he goes into <coughs> uh, Greece, Athens, and that whole Mars Hill sermon, he looked for an opportunity. And he got the opportunity and he took that opportunity. Right now, of course, that is in ministry, even in other things, right? Uh, if there are uh, if you if there are opportunities, it's probably in the workplace, there are, you know, what if you get an opportunity to become a managing director? Right now you're a manager, you get an opportunity to become a managing director in another company. Right? It's not selfish. Probably God is you finished this phase of of being a manager, you've been faithful there, and God has opened a door, and you're just walking into that door. Right? So it, it is definitely not uh, not selfish at all. Right? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, so as you look for opportunities, again, if we do everything out of this mindset of prayer, or, or mindset of glorifying God, uh, that is more than enough. Okay. So you know that your foundation, that's why we look at chapter one, the foundation. So whether whether I start a business, I, 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 whether I'm in a working professional or I become a businessman, I may be the top head of a business company or maybe a top entrepreneur, but what is the foundation? The foundation is God. Help me to glorify you in my life, to honor you in my life, to give you the first place in my life. And so when we have these non-negotiables, you know, you can go ahead, just reach, just reach to the highest places that God has. Right? Uh, look, Daniel is a wonderful example, right? He came into the into the uh, the uh, the king's palace as just maybe as those, you know, the uh, to help out in uh, in the team there, but God gave him grace. God gave him favor. He didn't say, "No, no, don't make me governor. I don't want to become governor." No, no. right? He, he took that opportunity and became the governor. And then that favor was so good that Darius came and said, "You only be governor because I heard that when you were governor, everything went well." So there's nothing wrong in that, right? But look at uh, Daniel, he didn't say, oh, now I'm going high up, so then I'll have to uh, bow down to these idols. No. You know, when he was in, thrown into the lion's den, he was an old man. He was not a young man as shown in, the, in these movies and all. He was an old man. And he had passed through two kings already. Right? Uh, but in his mind, in his heart, he knew God is first. Whether he's governor or whether he's a king, 
God is first. Right. Right. Rosalind asks, can asking any man of God to use can also be considered as biblical? Can asking any man of God to to use uh, uh, can you can you ask the question, Rosalind? Is it okay if you can ask the question? Like, Pastor, can I like not I, but just an example? Like, can, can somebody ask yeah. me, my God, like if you can give me an opportunity or uh, like uh, for me also to preach or to serve? Like asking any man of God rather than like praying about it. Seeking. Okay. Yeah. So, see, it's it's not wrong, but what happens is. Uh, maybe that's not the right time, right? Uh, the, the moment we ask and say, I want, I want this opportunity, sometimes they may give it to you, right? And maybe that's not the right time. Maybe it's the right time as well. We, we never know. But, but I feel, I feel, right? This is a personally, this is what I feel, right? That when God gives the opportunity, there's more honor in that. When God opens the door, rather than we asking, when God opens the door, there's more honor in that. There's more favor, there's more grace in that. Because God knows that you're, you're ready, right? that you're ready to do this. Right? Uh, one of the examples is, uh, I'll just take another few minutes, please. Uh, you know, I'm very, I'm very afraid of, you know, uh, not afraid, but I get nervous in front of a camera. Uh, recording and all of these things. Uh, so it was, it's not my cup of tea. It's not something I can preach in front of people and all that, but the camera, you know. Uh, so I knew that uh, that's one of my weaknesses, but I had to overcome it. I had to say, okay, God, if, if what if I get an opportunity? I can't be scared. I need to overcome it. And, and so I didn't get the opportunity immediately. It was only after about 10 years of you know serving in the church that I got the opportunity 10 years I never asked for it right uh, but 10 12 years old only then I got the opportunity and when I got the opportunity also it was still a little bit nerve-wracking but I knew that okay God has put me here God has given me this opportunity so I must take it and I must use it for his glory so Rosalind to answer your question not wrong to ask but always wait uh, because God knows when is the best time you can uh, to launch you out. Right. Wonderful. So we'll stop here and then we'll pick up on Monday. Uh, let me just make a note. We stopped at. Okay. Yeah. Expect unusual favor. All right. Yes, Divya, go ahead. Uh, just a very small question, Pastor. Yes, uh, yes. Divya. Just wanted to be curious to know when you were doing the Bible college, were you working as well? No. So I was working in the corporate sector for about three years and I really wanted to join the Bible College. So uh, I think I was sharing with uh, John as well when he had come to Bangalore recently last last week for the conference that, you know, I knew that, okay, if I'm a Bible College student, there's no income. So, uh, for, so for about two years, I saved up money, I saved up for my fees, I saved up for everything that I needed. And I knew that if I'm doing my course in, for two years in college, uh, in Bible college, uh, I know there was no source of income, so I didn't want to be dependent on my parents or anyone else. So, uh, so throughout the two years that I was at Bible college, I had enough funds to pay for my fees, uh, pay for my you know uh, food and whatever extra things that needed to be done. So again, that was a preparation that I had to do. Uh, and I'm glad I did it because I didn't have to depend on anyone. So, yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. That's amazing. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Let's just quickly pray and we close. Right. Father, we thank you for this day. Thank you for enabling us to learn. And I pray, God, that even as we draw out our plans and purposes, we thank you for your grace, your gifting in each of our lives. We pray, God, that you will continue to empower us, strengthen us, to fulfill every purpose that you have for us, Lord. Uh, and we're excited for what you're teaching us, what you're putting in our spirit, Lord. And we pray that you will use us for your glory. We thank you and praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, everyone. Uh, have a great week ahead. I'll see you on Monday. God bless. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you.